Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we will be creating a replicated health bar in Unreal Engine 5. Now if you guys have any questions or suggestions or if you guys are interested in my game Enigma or if you guys do wish to support me, links to my Discord as well as Patreon is down in the video description. So now let's create the project. So what we can do is we can use uh, something called rep notify in order to register the update in health. You'll understand what I'm talking about. First of all, to play in multiplayer, just go over here to net mode, play as client or play as listen server. And you can go ahead and set the number of players to two or whatever number you want. All right. So now if I run this, my multiplayer game is working. Ignore the warning over here. Now I'll just head into the third person character and I'll just set up some code for damage because we don't have it yet. So I'll just go ahead and if, you, if you're working on a basic system or if you're learning, you can follow along. Otherwise you can skip through a few seconds in this video until I finish this. So on left mouse button, what I can do is I can just damage. So I need a server RPC obviously because the damage is always applied on the server. So server damage let's say you never want to apply the damage on the client if you know how multiplayer works i'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious to you so server damage if you apply damage on the client first of all your game is not going to be in sync second you can't trust the client you can't just let the client choose how much damage he wants so it's prone to cheating and stuff uh, so once we apply damage so we can Call the function and we'll use a line trace. So we'll call line trace by channel. And for the start and the end, we can go ahead and plug in the values related to the camera, which we'll pass from the client. So get player camera manager, uh, get forward vector, and we can get the camera location as well. And we can just pass in these two parameters. All right. So we need two vectors. So vector one and vector two. This one is going to be location. And this one is going to be forward. You can name them more descriptively. So we have the location as well as the forward vector. What we can do is we can multiply the forward vector and add that to the location. So we can multiply this by a constant and add it to the location. So multiply this and add it to the location. So this will be the end. We can promote this to float and let's say we add 10,000 or something. So that's just 1,000. And location is going to be start. And over here, what I can do is I can go ahead and check if we actually hit something. If we actually did hit something, we can go ahead and apply damage. All right, one more thing, I'll just change this uh, trace channel to camera because by default, the capsule ignores visibility. So if you head into collision here, so if I can find it, that is. So collision presets, you can actually see that it ignores visibility. So we'll not mess with the collision for now. So we'll just change the channel to camera. You can have your custom trace channel. That's probably what's recommended. And let's say we just apply 20 damage. Now let's create the widget. So you can do it anywhere. I'll just create a new folder called UI. Inside here, I can go ahead and create a widget and call this one BP health bar. Open it up. We'll just uh, create a basic setup with a canvas panel and we'll add in a progress bar. And we'll set the default fill percentage to one. Again, if you have any initialization logic from your character, you can run that as well. That works too. Uh, for, in my case, just for simplicity purpose, because my purpose is to show how to update it. So I'm just setting this to one and I'll anchor it to the bottom right. And I'll create a simple function to update it. So custom event, I can call this one update health. I'm assuming the health is going to be between zero and 100. So the thing is the progress bar is going to take a value between 0 and 1. So we have to divide it by 100. So set percent. And we will probably need to divide this. So divide this by 100. This is if your health uh, 
is between 0 and 100. If your health is between 0 and 1, you won't have to do this step. All right. Now uh, it's time to set up the actual health variable. So in the third person character, I can go ahead and create a new variable and call this one health. And this will be of type float, obviously. And we can set the default to 100. One thing you can do is you can also use this value range so to kind of, you know, limit the values. And one more thing you have to do is set this to rep notify so that we'll be able to work with this in a networked environment. And the notify is going to kind of let us to update it in our widget. So after we add our mapping context, so we are getting the controller. So obviously if it's a remote uh, uh, client, it's not going to be valid. So this is obviously always the local client. So what we can do is we can create the widget. So it's the health bar and we can store a reference to this. So health bar and we can add it to the viewport. So we can go ahead and add to viewport. And now in our on rep health, so if our health bar is valid, because initially it need not be, sometimes this is going to get called first. What we can do is we can go ahead and update health. And the uh, updated health will be the new health value. So on rep health basically calls uh, on each client whenever there's an update to the health variable. As simple as that. All right. So this is going to work. So on rep health, we can go ahead and update the health. Now, one thing that you may be thinking is, okay, it's going to update the health on all the clients, right? So all the clients are going to be having the same health. No, that's not going to happen because we are only creating the health bar on the local client. So it's going to go to is not valid and up, update health will not be called on that particular client's health bar. So it'll only occur on the correct client. So now if I press play and if I just click over here, so I can't actually see anything. So let me actually change the line trace part so that we can see what's up with this. So I can say for duration and make sure the trace channel is camera. So now I can see the line trace. And now this is actually, the line trace is actually hitting, but the health is not getting updated. Let's see what's up with that. We haven't set up the damage logic and we also didn't determine the damage actor. So just drag this to damaged actor. And one thing you have to do is uh, you'll have to, okay, we've handled apply damage, have we? No, we haven't. So on event any damage, so whenever uh, we encountered any damage, so whenever somebody damages us, we can set the health to be health minus the damage. So it's going to be health minus the damage and we want to limit the value between zero and 100. So I'll use clamp. So clamp will basically say between which values. So it can go from zero to 100. So it can range between these two values. So now if I go ahead and press play, our logic should work. So as you see our health updates, and over here as well are health updates. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys did find it helpful, make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up. Also, if you guys have any questions related to this, feel free to go and ask them on my Discord server. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.